today's lesson is going to be on something called significant figures. And significant figures are going to help us to explain how precisely a measurement was taken. So let's say I measure the length of something, and I find that it is 14.21 centimeters. This is easy to see. We have measured it to the nearest hundredth of a centimeter. But let's say I measured it, and it wasn't 14.21, but it was 14.20 centimeters. If I write 14.2 centimeters, that's not the same as writing 14.20. This tells me that I've only measured it to the nearest tenth. This tells me that I've measured it to the hundredth. The value is the same. If we put it in our calculator, it gives us the same thing, but this is a more precise measurement. So we need to be able to express how precisely we've measured something using significant figures. Now the significant figure rules are pretty simple. The first one, if it's not a zero, it's significant. Any value that we write that is not zero, for example, one 4.21, none of those digits are zero, they're all significant. The second set of rules deal with the zeros that we see there. And I'll talk about the zero and the 14.20 in a minute. But let's start with something called a captive zero or a zero between significant figures, like 204 uh, kilograms. This zero is in between significant figures so that I have a three significant figure measurement here. Okay, that's pretty simple. Zero is between, it's going to be significant. Now the other rules, apply to other zeros, okay? And I have broken it down to a single rule, okay? So if a significant figure is both to the right of a significant figure, and you will recognize I abbreviate significant figures as sig fig. So if a zero is to the right of a significant figure and That means both to the right of a decimal, it is going to be significant. Now right, let's take a look and see how this works. Okay, uh, so let's take a look at the figure 0.042 liters. Okay, and I need to make my decimal point here big enough to see on the screen. Now, if I look here, this zero really only shows us where the decimal point is. And what about this zero? Well, is it to the right of a significant figure? No, okay? So this measurement, we would say, only has two significant figures in it, okay? This zero is not significant. It only shows us the magnitude of the number. And another way to look at this, if I were to write this in scientific notation, those numbers only affect the order of magnitude. So they don't affect the measurement itself. So they're not significant, okay? Let's look at a couple other measurements. What if I have 16.40? And we would need a unit for that, but I just wanna look at the significant figures here. Is this zero to the right of a significant figure? Well, this is a non-zero digit, it is to the right, so it is a significant figure. So this is to the right of a significant figure. Is it to the right of a decimal point? And the answer is yes. There is a decimal point here. This zero is to the right. Now I never said it had to be exactly to the right, just to the right. So it's to the right of a significant figure. It is to the right of a decimal point. So therefore it counts. Now if I had something like um, 320, I look here, this zero is to the right of a significant figure, but it's not to the right of a decimal point. So this one would not count as a significant zero. This would give me only two significant figures in this measurement. Now there is a tricky one that we might see sometimes. Okay, what about this one, 76.00, okay? Uh, this one, I have this zero, which is to the right of a significant figure is to the right of a decimal point. So this is significant. This one, also to the right of a significant figure, also to the right of a decimal point. So this is gonna give me four significant figures. And I know you were thinking, well, that's not that tricky. Well, what about this one? Okay. Okay, when I look at this, okay, I've got three different zeros. This zero 
is to the right of my decimal point right here. This one is also to the right of the decimal point. So our second figure, our second rule counts. Well, what about to the right of a significant figure? Well, the four is here. So these are all the way to the right of a significant figure. How does this one work out though? It's not to the right of a decimal point. But since this is a significant figure and this is in between, it counts. I didn't say it had to be between non-zero digits, just between significant figures. So this is how our significant figures rules work. Now, you know, in the assignment, you'll have a chance to take a look at some different measurements and apply significant figures. But we also need to be able to use these in calculations. And there's two different ways that we're going to learn how to do calculations. Now, there are a lot of different calculations in chemistry. Sometimes we use logarithms. Sometimes we use exponents. I'm going to keep the significant figure rules that I teach in the beginning, at least, very simple. I'm only going to teach you addition and subtraction and multiplication and division. So with addition and subtraction, it's all about place. If I measure something to the 10th, like 14.2 centimeters, and I have something else that I add to it, and I measure it more precisely, maybe uh, 243.146 centimeters. Now I've measured this one very precisely, but when I add these two together, I am limited by this measurement. I can only say that my answer is going to be 257.3 centimeters. I am limited by the place that I have here. So when I narrow this down, the tenth is all I can take it to. Okay, addition and subtraction follow the rules of place, and that's going to be important for us. Now, sometimes you can gain a significant figure by adding or subtracting. Sometimes you can lose a, a significant figure by subtracting. Okay, for example, if I convert from Celsius to Kelvin, uh, the conversion is 273.15. So I want to take a look at that. Let's say I have 26 degrees Celsius, and I want to convert that to Kelvin. Well, I'm going to add 273.15 as my conversion factor. We'll worry about the units on that later. But when I add this together, I am going to get 299, but I'm not going to get the 0.15 here. I can put the 0.15, but when I write my um, divider, this now has 290. 9 Kelvin. It's only to the unit here. It can only be to the unit here. Now notice 26, two significant figures. 299, that's three significant figures. Now that's not really going to matter for us that much until we start multiplying and dividing. So the rule for addition and subtraction is all about place. For multiplication and division, it's about number. So let's say I have something and I'm going to take, uh, let's see, 14.73 moles times 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin times uh, 299 Kelvin to keep with the previous one and divide that by 1.4362 atmospheres. Okay. When I calculate this. Now, I'm not going to go through and do all the calculations here. What I'm looking for is to express the number of significant figures. So if I look at each measurement, I can tell the number of significant figures that is present. So in this one, 14.3 moles, I have four significant figures. In this one, 0 0.08206, this zero is not significant, but this one is. One, two, three, four. This also has four significant figures. My temperature only has three significant figures, and my value down here, which is a pressure, has five significant figures. When I'm looking for the answer, I am going to include the number of significant figures of the least significant figure, uh, least significant measurement. That is this three right here, three significant figures. So my answer, when I display it, is going to have three significant figures. So these are the rules that we'd be working with, and they're going to apply on all calculated problems. If there's multiplication or division, I will expect you to use the proper number of significant figures. If there's addition and subtraction, I will expect you to use the proper number of significant figures. Now, the one thing I want you to be aware of 
if you change between multiplication and division and addition and subtraction, you need to stop, establish your significant figures before you make that change. In this one, it's all multiplication and division. Put it all in your calculator. Do not round anything until you get to the very end. So with that, this should help you understand significant figures.